Hi, I'm Kristen Sorth, Director of the St. Louis County Library. Thank you for joining us for the 2021 Frankie Freeman Inspirational Address and Keynote Event for the Library's Black History Celebration featuring legendary suspense writer Walter Mosley. The St. Louis County Library is proud to celebrate the past and present achievements of African Americans. This year, our Black History Month theme is Enriching Culture with Hope and Healing. Please visit the library's website to see our full lineup of author interviews, musical events, children's story times, and other really fun activities. I also want to recognize and thank AGC Media for their incredible support of the library's virtual programming and for producing and web hosting this video. Left Bank Books, St. Louis's premier independent bookstore, has signed copies of Walter Mosley's books available for purchase. Our interview with Walter Mosley will begin in a couple of minutes. But first, the library's keynote Black History Celebration Address is named in honor of renowned civil rights attorney Frankie Freeman, who was involved in litigating the case that changed state laws and made housing available to all races. Our Frankie Freeman Inspirational Address always includes the presentation of an award recognizing significant community service. The recipient of the 2021 Frankie Freeman Inspirational Award is James Clark, Vice President of Public Safety and Community Response for the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis. Congratulations, Mr. Clark, and thank you. Your service to the St. Louis area to champion poverty and crime reduction and better services for the disenfranchised speaks to the very spirit of what the Freeman Award embodies. Ms. Freeman's spirit certainly continues on through the extraordinary work you are doing in our community. We are now happy to share our 2021 Frankie Freeman Inspirational Address featuring the Grand Master of Detective Fiction and one of our all-time favorite guests at St. Louis County Library, the legendary Walter Mosley. Walter will be sharing Blood Grove, his 15th thriller featuring the iconic private eye, Easy Rollins. Walter is joined in conversation by Rachel Housel Hall, a rising star in the world of suspense writing. Rachel's latest book is the thriller, and now she's gone. I am so happy to be here with Walter Mosley, who will be giving the keynote speech for the St. Louis County Library's Black History Month celebration. Thank you for joining us, Walter. Well, I'm very honored to be here with you sharing you know, the keynote address, and it's great to be here, and it's, a, and it's an honor to be here. Could you please share what Blood Grove is about in your own words? Everyone's happy because Easy Rollins is back. So many times you have you know that word theme. You know what what is the book about? You know it's it's always about the same thing, but that thing is always different. He starts in 1939 with Gone Fishing, which isn't a mystery, and then 1948 with Devil in a Blue Dress, which is a mystery, and then we slowly start coming up to time. It's like 15 books. So as all of Easy's books, there's transitions. Now we're in 1969. He's almost 50. He's aging and racism, the notions of it are changing. His identity of who he is is very much about what veterans you know, go through, people who, who've experienced the war and how they identify themselves, how they identify each other. In America, you know, everything is about either race or money or some combination of the two. Mm -hmm. And that for me carried through everything. And it kind of made me sad because that was a reality you know, 60 years ago, 100 years ago, today. Um, is that what you carry with every book, no matter if it's a, you know, an easy book or, you know, the, the Charcoal Joe or... You know, it's interesting. When, when for instance, when I write a Lynn and McGill novel, mm -hmm. uh, it's hardly about that at all. It is a little tiny bit and, and kind of more and more as, as Leonid gets older, but uh, or if I'm writing, you know, science fiction, sometimes it has something to do with that that kind of identity. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm being political because I'm always writing about black male heroes specifically and black people in general. 
but um, but the books themselves might you know, can be about all kinds of different things. Easy, on the other hand, he is always dealing with it because, like in this novel, a very rich man can't pay him. He says, "But you can hold on to my Rolls Royce." And Easy is driving a Rolls Royce. He realizes, you know, very early in the novel, he has to stop doing it because the yeah. police stop him, you know, every ten blocks. He said, yeah. "We know you don't belong in this Rolls Royce, boy." Now, come on, get out of here. A few things freaked me out as and, and made me breathless as I was reading it. Definitely a black man back then, especially in a Rolls Royce, that freaked me out because it's like he's going to get stopped. And of course he does. But what I, um, other than the, the, the race and everything, what also struck me was the theme of family. There are so many different types of family in this book. There is, of course, his children you know, Feather and Jesus, there's his adopted family, there's his crime family, mm -hmm. there are the Band of Brothers family, um, there's family turning on each other and telling each other secrets. And family is just, even the, for me, the title Blood Grove spoke of family, family tree and mm -hmm. crooked roots and all the rest of it. Was that intentional? Intentional. It's 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 an interesting it's interesting notion. You know, I mean, you know, as a writer, also mm -hmm. that you write something, and you, that one piece that you rewrite, you're rereading it again and again. And, but there are many times that you come to the the book and you and you reread it, and you say, "Oh wow, it looks like I was talking about family here." Or not only was I talking about family here, I'm I'm talking about it here. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, talking about identity here and, you know, racial identity, uh, uh, gender identity, um, identity having to do with war. So, yes, I would say I would say that. But 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 I, I don't know if I did it on purpose. Yeah. I mean, in as much I mean, when you go back through and you say, oh, this is this is really working like this. I can change it a little bit so it could be a little deeper, that kind of stuff. But, you know, the, the thing is, is when you're talking about. Um, I mean, I guess it's, it's good. It's okay to say that when you're talking about somebody that you love, mm -hmm. you're talking about them. You say, "Oh, so what is what is your mother's theme?" You could say, "Well, so she's my mother. She didn't have a theme. She's my mother." She's just, yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like it's not even a mother. It's my mother. You know, or yeah. you know, this is my friend, Easy Rollins, somebody I care about, you know, deeply, and his daughter, and what's going on with you know what her family identity is. That story, while you're telling it even though it may have a theme to it, feels so much, I'm, I'm telling Feather's story. Yeah. Well, the whole notion of love. So there are the veterans and there are the white veterans and the black veterans and the white veterans do things for easy that they wouldn't have done had he not been a veteran. Is that out of love? What is that out of? For these particular veterans, you know, some of which are good and some are not, it's about duty. Mm -hmm. We did our duty. And because of that, we have an immutable identity. There's also the uh, identity of, with people and family. Uh, Easy and Miles have been friends for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And Miles is nobody you want to be a, a friend with. But if you've been a friend since you were nine, you're yeah. there together. Uh, and there's, yeah. a, there's a real feeling, you know, a brotherhood, you know, which is kind of wonderful because, you know, when you're, your brother's a psychopath, you know, as some of us have. Yeah, <laughs> that's really interesting. So and that and that's fun or, or your or people change so much people like Jackson Blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep harping on because I find the whole family thing, especially in today's world with the pandemic, with economics, with politics, with everything being so strange. You say the word duty and it's, you know, you're getting to know in some ways you're your, your blood family more because you're trapped in the house with them sometimes <laughs> and you don't tell them out as quickly as you would have if they were strangers because it's that thing. They're, they're family. You have a duty to go and help your dad do this thing or another, even though he's an asshole, you still are going to do it because of, of, of duty. So yeah, it, it's, I, I guess I'm reading it in today's pandemic world of how you look for family where you can and some things you do out of duty and some things you do out of, of love, um, especially a mother. And as a mom, every time you left Feather by herself, I freaked out. 
-hmm. because yeah, I, I have a near 17 year old and the thought of leaving her up in a turret house, just ah, tell me about writing her as she's grown over, you know, we haven't seen her, you know, every year as she's grown, but was that a challenge making her um, believable, making the relationship between her and easy kind of tentative, but love there, you know, I love the breakfast scenes, especially tell me about that since I'm into this whole family thing. I, I can write about him the way many parents are. That is not completely full grown adults themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, every, and, the, and, and the children actually, whether the parents know it or not, are having a big impact on them. They're, they're able to talk to them. They're, they're able to say, well, daddy, what's wrong? You know, when yeah. he gets so upset, he comes home and the door is unlocked and you know, but he they live up. on top of the mountain. You yeah. know, they live on top of a mountain. They know everybody there. Nobody can get on that mountain. I mean, you can't Still, get there. Yeah. And so, and so she leaves the door unlocked and Easy's so upset. And she finally, she says, but yeah, what's going on? And of course something is going on. Yeah. And when he explains it to her, she says, okay, dad, I understand. This, she doesn't say it. This is your issue, but I'm going to keep that door locked. What do you think he wants for, for her, for Feather in the future? You know, in America, you know, people have all these like really odd notions. And, you know, at least I think, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're talking about, um, well, um, you know, are they going to get that college education? Are they, are they going to be able to compete in this way? Are they going to live life uh, successfully mm -hmm. uh, by the same template that I lived life successfully? Mm -hmm. That last one, of course, they're not because life changes, always changes. Right. You know, you come out there. My father, when I was a kid, said, well, Walter, you're going to you get a job. You work either for the city or you work for a big corporation because they will keep you working forever and they'll you know, retirement, you know. And, yeah. you know, I said, OK, Dad. But it wasn't true. I knew it wasn't true. And it, it later wasn't true. Easy really wants his children to be happy. For instance, his, his son, Jesus, mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's he's a brilliant kid, but he's not a, he's not a, a school learned kid. Not at he's all. Working, he's a, a, a fisherman, you know, he's married uh, of all things, one of Mouse's ex-girlfriends and, and, you know, he has, he has kids and he's, and he's, and he's living a life. And, uh, and I think that he's, he's, you know, very proud of both of his children and yeah, yeah. that he believes that they can make the right decisions in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. What did you learn about Easy as you were writing this particular book? Every time I write about a character, you know, I mean, if, if I write once or if I write about him 20 times, every time I do, you know, I get deeper and deeper into into their their character. Mm -hmm. I I know that he was a veteran. But I didn't really ever spend a whole novel with him dealing with that. And so the fact that I did made me understand how complex his identity is. There's a passage. These were just normal precautions. One thing I never forget was that I was a black man in America, a country that had built greatness on the bulwarks of slavery and genocide. But even while I was well aware of the United States' crimes and criminals, still I had to admit that our nation offered bright futures for any woman or man with brains, elbow grease, and more than a little luck. Do you believe that, or is this? Merely, oh, absolutely. I know, absolutely. Um, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's something that Easy and I agree on. Okay. Uh, that uh, you know, I mean, it, it, there's that that thing. You, you sit there, and and you're standing with a person, and there's some other guy, you know, who was uh, born rich and uh, went to Harvard and has uh, millions of dollars and um, all these other things that you might want. Mm -hmm. And so the person will say to you, hey, you know, man, I wish I was in his shoes. I wish I was, I wish I was him. Like, look, look what he has. And you turn to him and say, yeah, you know, he has cancer. And the guy said, well, you know, I don't want that. And I said, no, no, you know, if you want to be in his shoes, that's what's standing in his shoes. Yeah. You know, the idea that, you know, that uh, race would make you better. I, I often think um, if, if you were talking to, to Langston Hughes, and you ask Langston, uh, you know, why do those, you know, uh, white people hate us so much? Uh, Langston would say, it's because they don't know how beautiful it is to be colored. Hmm. You know? 
there's yeah. there, there's you know there's things in our lives there's there's uh, there's you know there's jazz and there's gospel there's um there's you know architecture there's there's the the building of this country there's 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 living in in, in a place where, where we 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 see so much and we know so much you know that the idea of, of wanting to give that up you know it's like yeah. you know i do cuz i i see other people living lives that i would never live they're yeah you know in quotes better lives than mine but in reality yeah it's not it's like we have all that and you know i never want to be anything but who i am but then you gotta hide you have to you know ask somebody to take over this rolls royce because i can't drive it you know around los angeles it's that kind of it, it's just what it, it is what it is, it is i mean is. you know okay. but Easy has the Rolls Royce. He can't really keep it. He needs a car that he can get around and nobody's going to notice him. So yeah. he goes to one of his best friends, John, the bartender, and says, John, I, I need to leave this Rolls Royce with you, you know, uh, yeah. because I, I need your car because I, I can't do this. Yeah. And John and John says, OK, great. But then you get to see John and Easy talking to each other. You get to see a life that you'd never suspected, mm -hmm. that, that you would not suspect, your knowledge, ability, uh, history, you know. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, you know, in, you know, in America, because we're so dominated by capitalism, think, well, the only thing that defines success is, is wealth, you know, in, in the form of money, you know, mm -hmm. not only wealth, but, you know, but things that can be transformed into cash. And, you know, there's so many other, I mean, you, you could waste your whole life, you know, running after that thing and, yeah. and you can never get enough and why did you do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm assuming, and this is just an assumption, that when it came time to write scenes with police, you didn't have to like reach far to figure out how did police treat black folks back in 1969? I've been stopped, especially when I was young in LA, so many times by the police and they questioned me and they thought I did a crime. And I've been stopped in Boston, I've been stopped in, in Vermont, I hitchhike. I used to hitchhike a lot, so I got I got stopped in all the middle states. Oh, gosh. Um, there's a, a certain limitation, but one of the things I, I kind of like about Easy, they're police he gets along with. Yeah, they're, they're, it, it's yeah, not it's a big Irish guy. Yeah, yeah, no, and right, and 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 Suggs, you know the mm -hmm. the guy who's married to like a, a you know a, a, a lifetime criminal. Uh, he's he knows he he knows all kinds of people and we know all kinds of people and, and the minute you start making when the minute you start making a prejudicial uh notion about a person yeah or about a, a type of person um you know you're going to be making a mistake i want to switch to another of both of our favorite characters and that's the city of los angeles you know i'm a native or, wait wh were you born here you were born yeah. here right yeah, yeah. and so Every time again, I read one of your books, it talks about the streets and it's like, ah, oh, Pico, oh, Olympic. But also I get very hungry because there's lots of eating in, in, in your books. Are you a foodie? I mean, are there places that um, you collect or that you remember from the past that you're like, I wanna place a scene there? The supper club where he and Mouse are eating these you know, gigantic steaks. Is that a very conscious choice of what they're eating, how they're eating, who's surrounding them when they're eating? Do they feel, you know, food represents love. It represents safety and familiarity. Let's talk about the culture of LA then and now and how it plays a part of um, what you write. I believe that the, the, what's paramount in, in writing is what's pedestrian what everybody does, you know, everybody eats, everybody goes to the bathroom, everybody, you know, like has a family, you know, or has lost a family. Um, everybody, you know, has sexual drives, everybody, um, there's, there's all those everyday things that, that, that you want to include. Now, when it comes per for personally, you know, my father went to work at seven, my mother, I think went to work at 830. You know, they got to work at those times. Mm -hmm. So my father always came home an hour and a half, two hours earlier than my mother. And he made dinner every night of my life. He made dinner every night of my life. We ate dinner together every night of my life to, you know, when, when I lived um, with them. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and I, I cook, 
you know, I never learned how to cook. Nobody, you know, taught me how to cook. And nobody, you know, but I cook and I can cook every night and, and I can make something different every night. Mm -hmm. You know, I can make fancy things. I, I rarely, you know, I, I rarely want to, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, the basic thing said, well, you get some red beans and rice. I said, I don't need anything other than yeah. maybe a little andouille sausage. That's it. And, well, you know, good, and so, week. yeah, you know, that that's that's like that's life, you know, so. Yeah. I, but yes, I, I love cooking. I love eating, but I also uh, love my father yeah. who, I, you know, who I watched and I became like, you know, and, and yeah. more, I notice that more and more all the time. Yeah. Well, and once again, I keep harping on it. It's a family thing too, because some of he and Fe their, their most precious time together is over breakfast. Um, he and mouse over, over great steak. It's mm -hmm. yet one more instance of how we bond with each other. Um, yeah. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. I always, I always want like a great ribeye after, you know, yeah, that's, some yeah. of your scenes. Right. Yeah. So, or some yeah. fried chicken or, or the raw yeah. oysters with Tabasco sauce or, you yeah. know, whatever else he's, he's eating. Yeah. Yeah. What was the hardest thing to write um, for this book or to come up with the plot? or, you know, the characters, or even the names, you always come with the most wonderfully bizarre names ever. What was the hardest thing about that? And also, where do you get your names? Do you collect names? I collect well, names. <laughs> you know, I, I, the thing about names, I mean, there's, there's a sense in, in, in easy that the names are so often the opposite of the characters, you know, starting with easy, you know, his name yeah. is easy, his life is anything but easy. You know, yeah. uh, there's it, a line in the book, he says, easy is my name, not my nature. Yeah. You know, uh, Mouse, Mouse is the last thing you would want to call <laughs> Raymond Alexander. Yeah. You know, Christmas Black, you know, his the, yeah. the last thing in the world that he's not, he's not celebrating. Yeah. You know, I, I love, I, I but I don't know where they come from. I just, I enjoy, you know, calling names. Um, one of the interesting um, opposite names in, in, you know, from that that era for me um, in my writing is uh, Fearless Jones, mm -hmm. because, you know, he's he is fearless, which means he's not brave. Yeah. Uh, you, you have to be afraid. You know, he tells his friend Paris Menton all the time. He says, well, you're the real you know, you're the you're the man with, with the bravery because you're afraid of stuff and you still do things. He said, yeah. I'm not afraid of anything. You know, I don't care. You know, yeah. Um yeah. But it, it's, uh, but I don't know, you know, I mean, listen, when you come from, uh, I think in any country at any time, when you come from poverty, read uh, Charles Dickens writing about, you know, uh, his, his, the day, his days of poverty uh, uh, in London, then everybody has these craziest names. I mean, you know, it's just like, wow, you realize it's not, you know, because, you know, people then were called John and Mary and, you know, and Victoria and, you know, and, but they, they don't have those names in his books, you know, yeah. it, it's, and it, it's, um, you know, I mean, even David Copperfield, you know, uh, that's just his initials, you know, transposed, right? Yeah. I mean, he, he's always, names are always saying something else. So back to my original question, what was the hardest thing? The plot is always hard because, you know, I, I finished writing a book and I go, wow, the plot doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> You know, because I know where I wanted to start and where I wanted to end, and mm -hmm. and I got there, but the plot didn't bring me there. And wow. So I'm, I'm always going back in and saying, "Well, I got to change this. And I got to move that around, and let's think about that a little bit." And you know, so I, I think that that's the 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 thing. But you know, it it's, I mean, it's it's the most. I, I love writing so much. It's such a a great thing that if anything is a problem for me, that mm -hmm. actually brings me deeper into it. So it's just me and you right now. <laughs> if I were to, you know, if you were to tell me the secret of being prolific and being, you know, uh, how to be you, what would you tell me? What would you, you know? Well, how to be me, I don't know. But how to be prolific. How to be prolific. I, 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 could, uh, I, I, could, I could deal with that. I, I think that in order, I, it's not true for everyone, but I think it's true for many, many, many. Mm -hmm. If you take a, a certain amount of time, not a gigantic amount, like you know, maybe two hours, three if you're if you can, and use those three hours every day to write, mm -hmm. 
as you write, you find that you get deeper and deeper into, you know, all the material in your head, uh, that you know what you want to write better and you know how to write the way you write better. Yeah. And the first uh, maybe five, six years I was a writer, I wrote a book every year. Mm -hmm. And then it was like every 10 months. And then it was every eight months. <laughs> you know, and, you know, at, at this point in time, you know. Last year it, was two last year. Yeah, it was two last year. And that's because I'm doing screenplay writing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to. Well, that other thing. Yeah, that was another thing. But if I wasn't, it would be three books a year. That would be no question. But, you know, but that's two, three hours a day, every day, 365 days a year. You, you, you get stuff finished that way. And you also are writing faster, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's, you know, when you go back, you know, you look at uh, Zola and Dickens and, and Balzac and all those people, right. They, you know, they wrote hundreds of books, yeah. you know, and, and you're doing it because you love it. Right. Cause you know, yeah. you always yeah, yeah. hear people saying, Oh, <clears throat> when I write a book, I'm gonna get paid. And it's like, well, do you actually love doing this? Right. Yeah. Does it, the stock market is, is 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 for somebody thinking you know they're going to be stacking money you know uh this you know it, they're very 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 few people uh in in writing novels who, who make that kind of money yeah. um big money uh and and usually they they're not writing what they want to write so last question what's next what's coming next I'm taking one of my novels, um, The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray, and making it into a six episode series Whoa. with Apple Television starring Sam Jackson. So, ah, really? Yeah, so that's a lot of work uh -huh. uh, there. Uh, and also, there's a, a company in England doing oh one my about my, The Man in My Basement, a movie about The Man in My Basement. So, I'm going to work a little bit on that. Uh, and so, I'm not going to come out with another novel until a year after this one. Um, okay, so that's. 2022 then? No, yeah. 20. Yeah, two, 2022. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, uh, and, and that'll be, you know, that'll be a King Oliver uh, novel, his, his mystery. Oh my God. Yeah. Yay. That makes me happy. So thank, thank you. you for joining us today. Um, it really means a lot for me personally to talk to you about writing. You're, you know, one of, one of my heroes, especially you know, to, being an LA writer, writing about Black folks in LA is my favorite thing. It's my jam. So thank you. Thank you, St. Louis uh, County Library for letting Walter and I just jabber away about great, uh, great literature and great characters. Thank you. Thank you.